Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our 2023 external exams for general maths. And in this particular video, we're looking at paper two. It's question two on time series. Now, before we get into it, I just want to show you some ways that you can engage further with McClatchy Maths as a channel. Firstly, you could like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll know when the next video is available. Why not consider um, telling someone about the video? You could tell us in the comments what you thought or you could simply um, put the link for the video on your class OneNote or share it with a friend. Um, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and why not consider super like, give back a dollar or two to the channel that's supporting you. Well, let's get straight into question two. It's worth four marks. Buffalo fly bites cause skin wounds on cattle. The table shows the average number of skin wounds per animal in a herd for two years. And we're asked to de-seasonalize the data. Now, de-seasonalizing data, it's a tedious process. You just need to remember the steps in the process and follow those through. You don't need to show all of your working. Um, I would recommend always do a sample calculation for one of them um, for, for each step in the process. But basically, we're going to build on this table. Now, the QCAA has provided the same solution in a slightly different setup. You might want to jump onto their website and have a look and how they've set it out. But I've basically used the same table in the same format. They've um, switched the table around and turned it into columns. I'm gonna show you how you can do it using the table that's given. So firstly, we want to calculate the average for each year. So here's the year 2021, here's the year 2022. Remember at averages, you need to add them all up and divide by how many there are, and there are four seasons in the year. So we're gonna take those first four numbers, divide by four, we get 242. Then we're going to do the same thing for 2022, add those four numbers up, divide by four, and we get 215. And we're just going to pop those in a new column on the end of the table to show the average. And we've achieved our first of four marks for correctly determining the average of each year. Okay, so we're a quarter of the way there. Second step is to calculate the number of skin wounds divided by the average. So we're going to take each of these numbers and divide it by the average for the year, and then each of these numbers individually and divide it by the average for that year. So make sure you keep um, the average for each year separate from each other. So we'll start with autumn 2021, and this is where you would do your sample calculations. You'd take 285, divide it by 242, and the answer will be 1.176. And there's a lot more decimal places. You could probably round that up to, off to four decimal places in your table. So we're going to insert now um, this little row here underneath each of these seasons. Put the two new years here and this number 1.1776 is going to pop into that table there. We're going to repeat that process now for the remaining seven numbers. So we're going to take for example winter 28 divided by 242, 195 divided by 242 and 460 divided by 242 and pop that in the table. Repeat for 2022. Take 276 divided by 215, 22 divided by 215 and so on all the way through to the bottom of that table and we achieve our second mark for working out the number divided by the yearly average values. So we're halfway there now. Step three, we now need to calculate the seasonal indices. Okay, so for example for autumn, what we're doing is we're basically taking these two numbers and finding the average of those two numbers. We add these two together, divide by two. We're going to repeat for winter, spring and summer as well. So we have got found out when we found the average of these two numbers, that seasonal index for autumn is 1.2307, and we're going to pop a new row in there. Okay, so for winter, we're going to repeat, add the two numbers together, divide by two, same for spring, same for summer, and with these are our seasonal indices, and we've achieved a third of four marks for determining the seasonal indexes. Our final step now is to de-seasonalize the data. What that means is we're going to take every one of these numbers, and we're going to divide it by its respective index. Okay, so for example, 285, I'm going to divide that um, by 1.2307, and I'm going to get a deseasonalized figure for autumn 2021. So that would be 231.5755, and I'm going to pop these um, deseasonalized pieces of data into the rows underneath. Okay, so I pop 232, and then I've rounded that off. Um, because you'll notice that the original numbers are all whole numbers. Okay, so what we're actually, we wouldn't want to have all decimal places because what that's saying is, is that when you take the seasonal factors of um, autumn out, 
um, the buffalo, buffalo um, fly bites would be 232 bites. It wouldn't be 232.2 or 231.575 bites. You wouldn't have part of a bite, you'd have a whole bite. So that's why these numbers are going to be whole numbers. Then we're going to repeat that process. So we'll take the 28, we'll divide it by 0 0.1090, the 195 by its index and the 460 by its index. And then we repeat for the year 2022. So now we have seasonal indices for all of our original data. So if you can remember those four key steps, and remember one of the best ways to do this is to keep your information nice and neat in a table or columns and rows, and then it's really easy for people to follow what you've done. Also a good idea just to do that sample of working um, as you go, um, you don't know if that's gonna be awarded marks or not. Um, and this particular question, I would say would be a complex familiar style question simply because deseasonalizing, it doesn't matter what the data is, it's always going to follow the same process every single time. And you got your fourth mark for deseasonalizing the data. Well, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions about what you saw today, I would highly recommend jumping first of all back to our time series playlist and having a look at some of the videos in there. We do go through the deseasonalizing process in a lot more detail and I do take it a little bit slower through that video. So that might be one to watch to refresh your memory. If you've got any questions about what you saw today, you can reach me on mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. And don't forget to engage with the channel um, with those ways we mentioned earlier on. Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I'm Natalie McClatchy. Have a wonderful day.